Okay, looking pretty good on Periscope and Twitter, testing out the microphones, seeing what else is going on for this evening where it comes to being able to be seen so I don't have to do this in pantomime or otherwise. Looks like things are doing pretty well. Let me do one more last microphone check here. Okay, seems to be working pretty well for right now. Thanks to everybody for tuning in for this evening, live and direct from downtown Memphis on Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter. I'm amazed myself, really. This is our weather overtime video weather blog update. Thanks for joining us on News Channel 3's video pages uh, across the Mid-South area. We'll take a look and see what's going on with your forecast as we go into the course of the next couple of days, including the forecast for what's happening for tomorrow morning as the kids head back to school and the teachers as well. Sorry, but that's the way the calendar rolls, unfortunately. As we head into the next few days, we're going to be seeing the chance of more areas of showers and thunderstorms coming on through. Can't stick around for the entire forecast check it out right here in the blue bar down in the bottom portion of the screen red bar again more about social media about what's going on and where you can find the various addresses here here there and back over that direction not easy trying to figure out which way to point on this. Thanks to everybody for joining us on Facebook right now. If you've got a question about what's going on with the forecast, please make sure you drop it into the comments section. We'd love to know a little bit more about what's going on with your location, again, and including information about the weather. Put that thermometer outside the kitchen window to good use and let us know more about what's going on in your area. So far, again, some pretty quiet conditions for tonight but more chances of showers and thunderstorms as we get into the course of the rest of the day tomorrow and also for the next several days as well. Jay Nichols, warm breeze over the south tonight. Very nice report for there. Uh, Ashley Norris, any storms tonight? That is going to be a possibility as of right now on radar. We don't have, again, a lot of anything going on immediately. Northern Shelby County, we've got a lot more in the way of showers taking place for the most part. Everything along and to the east of the river, Munford, north of Millington back toward areas east of Terrell, Bassett, Joyner in that location and all the way up into West Tennessee including right on up to and around Dyersburg and into areas just east of the Boot Hill. Going to be looking for more chances of showers and maybe some thunderstorms even erupting out of this but so far it hasn't really looked like too much of anything at this time. So again, more chances of showers, a few more thunderstorms out there. There could be some severe weather, but the marginal threat for right now has really pretty much just died away. There's really not much of anything expected in the way of major amounts of problems for the rest of the Mid-South as we go into the rest of the forecast tonight. But I would not be surprised to see some rumbles of thunder out there as we go throughout the rest of the evening. Metro area itself, again, not showing a lot. Those showers passing mainly west and north of Millington, heading on up to the area north of there. Northern Mississippi got some more showers developing around Coldwater and Senatobia, uh, just to the south and west of Holly Springs. Everything moving to the east at this time and a lot more activity down to our south. A few more areas of scattered showers up into northern parts of eastern Arkansas and then right across the Boot Hill, another line of showers making its way back over toward I-55 and heading up toward the I-155 I junction uh, right about the area of Hayti and around the area of Carothersville in there. Uh, Tracy Barnes Moore, do we have any more storms tonight? possibility of seeing some activity out there like that, but so far just not really picking up too much of anything in the way of thunderstorms. Hopefully it'll stay that way, but there could be some more activity throughout the course of the rest of the evening. Decent sunset tonight. Good view from around the area of Germantown at this time. Uh, this is, again, the possibility of again getting some pretty good pictures out there. As you can see, that rosy glow happening from there. If you'd like to see more of our weather bug cameras, they're all available, most of them anyway, at wreg.com slash webcam, so a great opportunity to look at more of what's going on in and around the Mid-South when it comes to our camera sections. A lot of great pictures out there, so feel free to check those out for this evening. Jay Nichols, hope we don't have Mother Nature giving us a night show, needing to sleep. Yeah, that's true. I could probably use some myself in there. Sarah Hood, scary clouds in your particular area. I uh, hope they're not too bad out there, but no severe weather at this time. That's important to note as well. Jersey Don Harris, cool, light rain, 79 degrees in Selmer, Tennessee. Thank you very much. Uh, Walls, Mississippi, Julia Cavallo, Thanks for uh, stopping in and checking in. Also, don't, fe don't forget to share our video around so people know a little bit more about what's going on in and around the Mid-South area. Just hit the share button on Facebook and let everybody else know a little bit more about what's going on uh, in your particular location here in the Mid-South area. When it comes to the Mid-South, things are pretty quiet. We have little, if anything, showing up 
in the way of earthquakes uh, from the New Madrid fault line, so good news on that. More earthquakes taking place, a lot more of them back into parts of Oklahoma, but nothing going on directly in the New Madrid line so far. Wide-scale view of radar, again, showing a lot of the showers and thunderstorms, mainly to the east of the Mississippi River, and again, making their way back over toward the Tennessee River Valley in there. Continuing again to see the potential for a few more showers and thunderstorms tonight, kind of dwindling as we go into tomorrow. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. Lee Ann Kirksey, hi, loving thunderstorms. Glad to hear. Sleeping better with a little thunder and rainfall. Always seems to relax me too, but some people get a little bit more uptight at stuff like that. Shane Barnes reporting rain in Jackson and looking like that's exactly what you're getting for right now with a few more showers on the way in your location pretty soon. And also, again, the possibility of more throughout the rest of the week. What we have is this next storm system coming on through, and it basically is not going to go too far. It's going to wobble back and forth across the area as a stationary front. It was a cold, well, technically it still is a cold front, and as it makes its way on through, it's going to be stretched out and stuck across the area, not really going too far at all. It's just going to be making its way through as a stationary front, and that's going to kind of irritate the atmosphere on either side of the front. That's going to create showers and thunderstorms and plenty any more of them. The fuel coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, that'll provide the sustenance for these storms to keep going. The stationary front will be kind of the beginning point of all that stuff. And as long as that thing is around the area, and until some large area of high pressure or another storm system sweeps on through, this is going to be as good as it gets for the next several days. So if you have outdoor plans, this is what you're going to have to deal with. Now again, the, storm, the uh, National Weather Service in Memphis is still saying the possibility of a few strong storms uh, into the Mid-South for later on today and into tonight, but it appears that the National Weather Service and the Storm Prediction Center have removed the threat of severe weather from the Mid-South area, so this forecast right here probably uh, needs to be updated on there. The good news is it looks like the threat of severe weather for right now being over with means we'll just have thunderstorms, maybe one or two strong ones out that direction, but not doing too bad for right now. Here's what it looks like, again, on the forecast for the rest of the evening. We have, again, the potential for some fairly cool conditions out across much of the Mid-South area as temperatures make their way into around the mid-lower 70s for later on tonight. That'll be the low temperatures that we get. Uh, for this evening. High temperatures tomorrow, not all that high thanks to the clouds and the extra chances of some rainfall early on back in the lower to mid 80s. Now chances of rainfall greatest in the dark green shaded areas and that's where we see again the best possibility along and south of I-40. The best area north of I-40 will be up around northwest Tennessee, Tennessee River Valley and down into southwest Tennessee. Beyond that it looks like we're going to see kind of an end to the possibility of a lot of rain fall for at least the next couple of days or so. Comfortable on Monday night into Tuesday. Temperatures back into the upper 60s to lower 70s. Showers could linger and thunderstorms as well as we get into Monday night around Tupelo. Looks like about a 50% coverage chance there. High temperatures on Tuesday going back into the mid to upper 80s and chances of showers and thunderstorms again mainly limited to around I-40 but still could be some pop-up activity in the mid-south over the course of the next couple of days for the early part of the week. Lows Tuesday night, Wednesday morning morning in the upper 60s to lower 70s, an isolated shower possible Tuesday night into Wednesday, and high temperatures on Wednesday back into the mid to upper 80s across much of the area. Gloria Davis been storming in Ashland, Mississippi for tonight. Tracy Barnes Moore, welcome from Bartlett, Tennessee. Thanks for stopping on by for this evening. Let's go ahead and poke our nose into the rest of the week and see what goes on. High temperatures a little warmer on Thursday. Numbers back in the mid to high 80s. Keep in mind, again, we are in August, so we could be baking at this time of the year as in high 90s, lower 100s. We're going to be way below that, so that's looking pretty good. Temperatures, again, correspondingly a bit lower thanks to the clouds and the rainfall which start to sneak their way back up again on Thursday. Low temperatures Thursday night, again, fairly warm and muggy in the upper 60s to right around the lower 70s. And heading into Friday, temperatures back into the mid to high 80s, so we continue to see some fairly warm conditions out there. And if you have plans for outdoors on Friday, you need to pay attention, and for the rest of the week for that matter, you need to pay attention for the potential of more chances of showers and thunderstorms across much of the Mid-South, which again is not going to be a washout, but you do need to pay attention to that if you do have outdoor plans out there. Pam Flowers, welcome from right up the road in Marion, Arkansas. Thanks for joining us for early this evening. Let's take a look and see what's going on out into the tropics, and if you're heading to 
Florida, the Bahamas, or the Gulf of Mexico in the next couple of days, you need to be aware of what's going on out there. Again, you do not want to be heading, traveling into an area that you may have to turn right back around and get right back out of as we see, again, the potential for more of these storms coming on through. Now, we'll talk about what is going to be a potential tropical storm. Hasn't quite gotten there yet in just a little bit. Looking down into the rest of the tropics, especially for the one that you see on the yellow cross here, we have a disturbance taking place here which again is going to be a possible storm coming up within the course of the next maybe couple of days but the threat of anything really developing out of this is relatively low at this time there's just not much of a chance about a 10 percent chance of development at this point and this thing is way out into the Atlantic between South America and back to around Africa now this one if it goes on its path expected it might curve a little bit farther north of the Bahamas and the Leeward Islands and this could be a problem for the East Coast into the next couple of days so something to think about there if you're going to be heading out relatively soon. Now what is being called potential tropical storm it's not quite there yet it's very close potential tropical cyclone number seven this one is going to again be developing as we get into the next couple of days it looks like so far it may just remain a tropical storm as it gets into the Bay of Campeche and into the southern gulf. Now this could also change and it looks like the main threat is going to take this thing right across the Yucatan Peninsula as a tropical storm and then make its way into eastern Mexico also as a tropical storm as we get into later on this week. Now Again, these forecasts could change. This thing could make its way up into the eastern gulf. It could go into the western gulf. It could just make its way where it is right now. This is just where the conventional wisdom says that it's going with all the computer models on board. So far, it looks like it's going to be a threat to areas south of Brownsville, uh, Texas. But this is something you're going to need to be uh, watching out for at this point in time. If you are going to be traveling to either the east coast or the gulf coast, pay attention to the weather Again, if this thing looks like it's starting to move a little northward, you may want to think about postponing your travel plans or otherwise on this. Uh, Donna Kelsey Faulkner, full moon, partial eclipse tomorrow and when. Uh, the eclipse that's going to be coming up tomorrow is going to be a nice one. It actually should be uh, really cool to take a look at if we live in that part of the world. But unfortunately, at this point in time, the eclipse is going to be visible uh, over the horizon, so to speak. It's going to be visible in the Indian Ocean, the Western Pacific, uh, way off into the Far East and down into Indonesia, Macronesia in that area, and over toward Africa. We are not going to be having a chance of seeing any of it. Unfortunately, that's just the way the rotation of both the Earth and the Moon line up at this point in time. So we're not going to be able to see the lunar eclipse at this point. Now, for those of you who are asking, about the solar eclipse coming up two weeks from tomorrow, we are starting to be able to see a little bit more about how the possibility of weather is shaping up. Now keep in mind this is again very far in advance at this point. What you're looking at is from the Climate Prediction Center and what you're looking at is for the next two weeks. Uh, estimate maps again on this, we have them for the next 8 to 14 days, the next 10 to 20 days, roughly somewhere in there, and then we have maps that go out even further than that. But this one is for roughly about the next two weeks or so. So as of right now, what we're looking at, this is a precipitation potential and B in the yellow stands for, again, below normal chances or less of a chance of anything uh, involving rainfall coming on through. This is starting to get a little bit iffy at this point because when you look at the area that has the A and the green on it, that's above normal chances for picking up rain, thunderstorms, stuff like that. Now, again, this is still two weeks in advance. Remember that more than anything else at this point in time because the farther in advance this gets, like forecasting winter storms, the more it gets closer to you, the more you're going to be able to see exactly what's happening. Again, it's like watching way down the roadway. Uh, from here at Channel 3, we can see over to West Memphis, Arkansas on I-40, and we can tell the difference uh, between cars and semi-trucks, but we can't tell a lot about the brand of the truck, who's driving it, things like that. So the closer that event gets to us, the more we'll be able to filter out the uncertainty. Now, this is not a guarantee that it's going to be raining. This just means means that the computer models looking ahead at the factors that they do have a chance to see that this is where we're seeing again the potential of maybe maybe some rainfall taking place a better than average chance of rainfall uh, out into this area Tracy Barnes more 93 percent dark for Memphis 
not even too sure exactly what that means, but if they want to forecast that, that's more than their job and willing to be able to do that. Anyway, this will change as well as the rest of the forecast. So again, this is something that we will be definitely paying attention to, so keep it tuned. Now, here's where it gets interesting. If you would like to help out monitor during the eclipse. There's this thing called citizen science. If you've never heard of it before, there's tons of opportunities available. You, as the general public, you don't have to have a PhD to participate in research projects. If you've got particular parts of equipment, even just including your eyes, your ears, and your brain, you can participate in a lot about what citizen science does. You help scientists take the readings, and you can participate in research projects. This is very cool. It's a very neat thing to do. And during the eclipse, when the, the moon blocks out the sun, that means the energy of the sun will be blocked out and the temperature on the ground will drop. This will be a great opportunity for those of you who have the right equipment to be able to participate in a temperature measuring experience to help out and find out more about when, where, how much the temperature drops at a certain location. And NASA will take all that information and put it together and that can help study the climate. You can help study the climate. That's something that we can all do together to particip participate in things like math and science and nature, biology, chemistry, meteorology in this case. It's a great opportunity to do what you can do at home without a PhD, even with a master's degree. You can do all kinds of neat things. Or if you have no degree, that's something else you can think about. This is your opportunity to help out and to do something really cool. And if you'd like to know more about this, I'll put it in the comments section when I get done, or I'll put it on my Facebook page and Twitter page, and you can find out more about how you can participate in the Citizen Science Program. So find out a lot more at this spot here from NASA, and get ready for the eclipse. Rain or shine in the next couple weeks, Citizen Science is going to have a lot to do there. Join me on A. 730 talk back live with Bob and Josh sports chat galore starting at seven o'clock in the morning if you'd like to stop by and learn a little bit more about what's going on in the Mid-South. My complete forecast available Monday through Friday morning, 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, Tracy Barnes Moore, how do we get some solar eclipse glasses? You can go to, I believe it's American Paper Optics, if I'm not mistaken, and they are in Bartlett, Tennessee. There's a spot, we just put that story on WREG.com. If you'd like to go there and just search eclipse glasses, uh, American Paper Optics makes the solar glasses, the solar viewing glasses uh, for many different outlets and you can purchase them online or you can pick them up there if I'm not mistaken. You can give them a call or order them online, ask them questions and a great opportunity again to learn more about the eclipse by getting those glasses and you have to wear those things. You may have seen some websites that say well when the moon uh, hits totality and then you can take your glasses off and look at them. You can't do that in the Mid-South area because only 95 percent of the sun will be covered up. That tiny 5% that is not covered by the, by the moon is going to be very bright and you don't want to ruin your eyes by looking at that. So even for us here in the Mid-South area, the sun will not be completely and totally covered over by the moon. So you're going to have to keep those glasses on throughout the entire eclipse to be safe. Again, to protect these things, you don't get a second chance uh, with, these, with these great little viewing things right here. So definitely want to make certain you, you consider eye health and safety more than anything else. We'll have an update on the forecast coming up on News Channel 3 at 10. If you'd like to stop by and learn a little bit more about what the forecast is doing, we'll have an update with uh, Kristen Holloway on the news desk and Mike Sadie coming up with sports at the end right there. Uh, Kevin Scallions, if you live in Tipton County, some glasses from the Tipton County Public Library. Excellent to know. Uh, good opportunity there to call and check in for that. I know there's some for sale at the Pink Palace Museum in Memphis at the gift shop right as you go in the lobby. I'm not too sure if they're for sale anyplace else specifically, but if you call American Paper Optics, they should be able to tell you a little bit more about that. More tonight at 10. Questions, concerns, ideas, comments about what to talk about, austin.onic at wreg.com. And we'll have more updates again at wreg.com slash weather. If there's something on here you would like to see, I'd love to know about it. Email me and let me know, and we'd be glad to post that on there for you as well. More coming up tonight at 10. Todd Demers has more on Daybreak, and I've got more details again online throughout the rest of the week, so stay tuned there. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. More coming up throughout the rest of the evening and throughout the rest of the week with News Channel 3 on air and online. Thanks for joining us, and stay safe out there.